I think this is the first time in the history of this channel that I'm actually reviewing the movie that's on this wall. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. What's going on you guys, James here, and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Rewind. Now if you don't know what that is, that's me going through each and every Star Wars episode, from one all the way to the Rise of Skywalker on December 20th. You don't want to miss out, trust me, so go ahead and hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell right next to it so you get notified each time I drop something new. Don't forget to like this video, share it with all your friends in the galaxy, and in the comments below. Let me know what you think about Empire Strikes Back. I love this movie, I really do. Alrighty you guys, so um, I was really excited for this rewatch, and now I'm even more excited to talk to you about it. So let's dive right into Star Wars Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back. Star Wars Episode 5 was released in 1980, directed by Irvin Kirshner and written by Lee Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan. Now this is a huge departure from Episode 4 because, well, George Lucas wrote and directed the first film in the original trilogy, and also wrote and directed all of the films in the prequel trilogy, but we, we don't talk about that. We already review that. You can go back and check that out. But now in episode five, this takes a different direction and most notably is the tone of the film. I mean, it is so dark. In the first movie, there was a lot about hope. I mean, it's literally in the title, A New Hope. And in this movie, it's all about the Empire, Palpatine, Vader, coming for the rebel's edges. You know what I mean? It, if you don't understand that reference, I'll explain it to you later. But that's also what makes it a perfect Star Wars movie, is because of its complexities. Now, the story itself is also a little jam-packed with different threads, and let's just name a few. You have Luke and Yoda, Luke and Leia, Han and Leia, Luke and Vader, Han and Lando, and then you have Boba Fett, and it just becomes a lot, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, Lee Brackett and Lawrence Kasdan, they wrote a perfect script. It's because everything worked and flowed together so seamlessly. Now I had an issue with episode four, just a little issue, with how the movie transitioned, and it almost felt like everything meshed together for the first 30, 45 minutes. But in Empire Strikes Back, there was never a moment where I felt the movie blended together too perfectly. It's just such a fantastic ride, where I felt I was engaged with each storyline thread from start to finish. It's fantastic stuff. Now if you'll let me get in my feelings a little bit, the film is so special for me because I bought almost every single toy that was, I guess, merchandised from this film. And I also felt transported to the worlds that Luke, Leia, and Vader were on because Hoth, for instance, is so special for me. When I saw Empire Strikes Back for the first time as a child, I honestly envisioned myself hanging upside down in a cave using the force to grab a lightsaber and escape. That's special because a lot of movies that I watched as a kid didn't have that same effect on me. And that's why I keep going back and saying that Star Wars for me, it wasn't just a film, it truly was a life-changing series of events. And speaking of Hoth and the multiple worlds that our heroes and enemies go to, I felt I was actually taken into those worlds. Now, it sounds weird, but basically when I was watching the film, when they got to Bespin, for example, on the Millennium Falcon, or Falcon, yes, we're still on that, I felt I was traveling in the clouds with them, and I think that's what's special about this movie is that it feels so wide in scale, much wider than the first film, that it almost helped with the immersion as a fan or as a moviegoer. But yeah, the set design pieces, all the costumes, everything looked better than A New Hope, and that's really cool. Now, not only did the set designs help get me in the mood for Empire Strikes Back, it's also John Williams' masterful score. He's already the best composer of all time, but in this movie, it's like he outdoes himself from every other film that he's done so far on this Star Wars Rewind series. The Imperial March, for example, is so sinister, and it actually shook me to my core in some moments. I mean, every little instrument makes a difference, especially in the scene where Han, Lando, Leia, Chewie, and the gang get into Bespin, and then they go into this dining room table and you see Vader kind of just like lift up. The score helped make that so much more sinister because there was an impact there. So yeah, Empire Strikes Back is great visually, but you have to give props to John Williams because the guy is just a masterclass in how to compose and produce a score. Okay, so let's switch gears to the acting department because that also got much better with this sequel. Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker really had more layers to him as a character, and I love that he was battling with being emotional rather than being calculated as he starts to train to become a Jedi. I mean, those scenes with him and Yoda were really good. I think it only works because Mark Hamill kind of bleeds that emotion onto the screen. He becomes a very relatable character for so many people watching this movie. And then there's the banter between Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher 
character, their characters bring all that chemistry that I'd imagine they had off screen into this movie. I mean, Han Solo's one-liners are amazing. Princess Leia kind of just like throwing it back at him is just so cool to witness. And then you have one of the more famous one-liners or maybe because I'm a sap, I love this. But when she says, I love you, and he says, Man, I really hope y'all said that because I was like letting you guys say it while you watched it, whatever. But it's amazing how this movie produces so much good dialogue, especially from the enemy. I mean, Darth Vader had some really cool lines also, and they just transcend through generations. It's like they never get old. And there's something else that I picked up on that I gained a deeper appreciation for on this rewatch. It wasn't much about the action for me. I was actually more interested in the character development in the story rather than the lightsaber battles. So when the Darth Vader and Luke lightsaber battle came in the whole no, I am your father sequence. That was amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's like top five lightsaber battles, clearly, especially because of its importance. But isn't it just so funny that I found a greater appreciation for the story? See, that's what's so perfect about the script is that no matter how big the action sequence, it never takes away from the actual development of the character. So yeah, many people really regard The Empire Strikes Back as the best film in the Star Wars franchise. And up to this point in the Star Wars Rewind series, you guys, this is clearly number one. This is reigning supreme. It's a perfect Star Wars movie, but I also think it's a perfect film because not only is it just, oh, really great in the Star Wars universe, as a sci-fi film, as an action movie, everything worked perfectly for me. Oh, and uh, yeah, I was here for the Yoda pettiness you know, on Dagobah. Alrighty, you guys, so there you have it. That's my take on The Empire Strikes Back. Now, listen, I don't have to tell you this again, right? But it is number one. I'm just curious to hear what you guys think about Empire Strikes Back. So in the comments below, let me know where episode five ranks for you. And also, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel if you liked everything you just heard and saw. And trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss out as we get closer to the Rise of Skywalker, so hit the bell right next to it so you stay up to date with anything new that I drop here at the channel. Oh, and uh, also, don't forget to like this video and share it with all of your friends and family in the galaxy. And if there's like an uncle that you kinda don't like, he's a part of the Empire, you can share it with him too. Alrighty guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening.